Earlier this month, Claw 3 Opus was released, and supposedly it's better than ChatGPT 4. From this chart we got from Anthropic, we see in every single category, Claw 3 Opus outperforms GBT 4. Therefore, let's put it to the test. We're going to see if this is a skewed study by Anthropic, or does Claw 3 actually perform better than ChatGBT 4? Welcome back, y'all. In today's video, I want to put this to the test. As we know, a lot of these AI companies or AI providers or whatever you want to call them sometimes put out these crazy studies. I remember when Gemini and Google first came out. Holy smokes, it's the GBT killer. It's the GBT killer. Was it the GBT killer? No, this is all competition. Therefore, we need to actually put it to the test and see if these are any good. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to buy Claude Pro. I already have Chad GBT Plus. We're going to try the exact same prompts, see what the outputs are, and see which one he likes better. See which one we like better, if I can speak today. Want to point out real quick as well, it does seem like Claude provides in their free version the ability to attach files and understand images now. That's pretty powerful. You're not able to do that on 3.5. But in today's video, we are going to be comparing the Pro version. So let's go to subscribe to Pro. Here's what we get when we subscribe to Pro. We level up the amount of usage we get. That's nice. We don't get kicked out halfway through a conversation. We get priority access during high levels of traffic. Makes sense. We get access to Claude 3 Opus, which is what we're going to put it to test today. That's what you saw on the chart earlier in this video. And we get early access to new features. Let's go and subscribe. Now, with most stuff, we can expect it to be around 20 USD a month. I did a whole video comparing all the chatbots and why you would choose each one. You can check it out right there. But let me go ahead and subscribe. Here we go. We got Claude 3 Opus selected. We got ChatGPT4 selected. Let's zoom out a little bit here. Let's check this out. First off, let's just see what the UI is. Let's see if it's changed a little bit since the last time I've used Cloud. Let me say hello. Because they have like a weird little loading emoji. Okay, so this is our choice here. It looks like we can switch between models within the actual chat. Or no, just starting a new chat, just like chat GBT. We got the ability to attach images now. That's nice. Let's go ahead and just start with the different value points we get within each model. So right off the bat, we're going to start off with the different features each platform provides. Can Claude do image generation? I think the answer is no, but let's just make it obvious. So we're gonna do generate an image of a dog here. We're gonna do generate an image of the dog here. And we're just gonna knock it down. I'm gonna do coding into this video, travel, everything. We're gonna see which one you would wanna choose in the context of what you want. Claude cannot do image generation. ChatGPT can do image generation. First check down, new chat. Another major feature people like to use within these chatbots is the ability to access the internet. So let's go ahead and gut check both and see if Claude can access the internet. So I went ahead and just set up a fake prompt here. Let's just say I'm going to Spain. I say, I want to go to Spain this summer. Please provide me with a hotel flight for the dates of July 2024, 8th to 17th. Can you provide me links? Hit enter here. We're going to try this with Claude as well. Hit enter here. Okay, so with ChatGPT, we know it has the ability to browse the internet. So I can go ahead and just click one of these. And it does take me to an external flight here. It actually does fill in the dates, does provide the times, and it gets my location right. That is creepy. Don't know. It knows I live in SF. Chill out. That's good. Anthropic, we get an outline here, but there is no ability for external links yet. Claude doesn't have access to the internet. Links provided may not be accurate up to date. Keep that in mind. So right off the bat, we have those situations out in the open. If you wanted image generation and you wanted to access the internet, Claude is not your case here. Let's go ahead and try other use cases that may make Claude shine more than ChatGPT. One other thing that may or may not be relevant depending on your use case. A lot of people don't really care if they have access to GBTs. That's up to you. But it does seem like right now, Claude does not have some type of democratized store where there's lasered in versions of Claude. Keep that in mind as well. I want to point out as well, I'm not here just to bash Claude. I'm just being very real, very unbiased in my way of presenting information. So yes, later in this video, we're going to go over maybe use cases where Claude outshines it. But let's just knock down the pillars of what's not provided on this platform for 20 USD. On top of that, we don't get access to custom instructions with Claude. If you don't know what custom instructions is, check out that video right there. I go over why it's valuable. I even give a GBT to create your custom instructions to get better outputs when using ChatGBT as a language model. But this goes over a lot of the base level of what's not provided on Claude. So knowing all of this, let's see if this can perform better in very specific use cases. I think at this point, I'm probably going to make a video comparing ChatGBT and Claude 3 when it comes to coding. So keep in mind of that. You can go and subscribe and check that out later. So let's go and try a little bit more complex prompt here. I'm going to take a screenshot of a website. Let's see what the code looks like compared to the two different models and proceed from there. We are at Chewy.com. Let's screenshot this and see what kind of wireframe we get from these coding models. Attach image. So in theory, I could have custom instructions here where I'd basically just ask, give me the code for the front end. It would know I wanted React, J6, and everything above the board. 
If I wanted to turn it off for this use case, I'm going to go ahead and just ask for it very specifically within my prompt. I'm going to command C, command A, command C, hit enter here. I may need to reproct a little bit further. Let's go ahead and attach the image here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and paste it here. And let's hit enter. Here we go. So we have a lot to go over here. First, let's look at the chat GPT response here. Now, one thing I like about the chat GPT response is it provides like relevant information like this. But to be honest with y'all, and this is like decent structuring, I would say, but notice and like, you know, add your own styles, right? So I have to reproctor, keep reproctoring chat GPT to give me the CSS styles, to give me the relevant information here. But it does seem like Claude in this context went the extra mile here and provided like a lot of the relevant information found within that screenshot. It didn't require me to keep reproctoring it. With the CSS you see right here as well. Now what I'll note here is that it does put in like dummy variables. So like this, for example, but it doesn't show you like actually importing it. So let me see if I can like reproctor this a little bit further here and get that kind of answer. Okay, can we put this code in a file called homepage.js and homepage. I did see on Twitter what people were saying was like they were using Claude 3 Opus to like basically give them like really big outputs of code files, but then have ChatGPT4 help with the logic side of it, which could have validity here. But let's go in and see what we get for this output here. Ooh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I like it. I like it. Wow. Okay. Okay, that's good. That's really good. Because this is, this is what this tells me, basically. That my original prompt was very simple, right? But if I make a prompt that was specific enough, it would be able to really handle, and I'll notice it lags a little bit here. It would be able to really handle like a nice looking file here, y'all. I like this. Hmm. Wow, okay. I'm impressed, I'm impressed. Let me go ahead and ask the same question to well, I can't even ask the same question to ChatGPT because what they do, what ChatGPT does is it's very much more like here is a wireframe and then you would have to basically proctor further for each section. So for example, tap, naviga tap navigation bar, I would say, okay, or let me just do something more simpler. I would say for the CSS classes, give me an example. Okay, give me an example of what we put in the CSS classes. One thing I also want to point out is if you want to see like how to really code using ChatGPT and those strategies I use personally, check out that video right there. I just made it like two days ago. I even give you in a custom instructions I personally use that will be very powerful for whatever use case you may code in. But this is what I'm talking about when it comes to ChatGPT where you kind of have to like read it. Oh. <laughs> you kind of have to lead it a little bit in order to get further information. But Claude 3... Definitely seems to take that extra step here where it will fill in that information for you, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. From this, though, I'm actually pretty impressed by the output by Claude 3. This kind of seems like a toss up. So as I described before, I'm going to do a whole video comparing the two. So make sure to subscribe and I'm going to put this to the test. I'm going to put these two through the ringer and see which one performs best in the context of coding. It does seem that if you know how to prompt it, you may not even need custom instructions in the context of coding for Claude 3 as you just need to provide a little bit more information than what I provided, which was like a one sentence thing. So that just about does coding. Let's see what else we can do here. We're just gonna throw out some very simple prompts at it and I'm very curious on how it interacts with it, right? So for example, write me an email to my boss saying I'm sick and can't be in work Friday. Command A, Command C, Control A, Control C, or Control A, yeah, Control A, Control C. And let's try that in Claude. So this is ChatGPT's way of handling this information. And this is Claude's way, okay. Very similar inputs and outputs. Let's actually gut check this a little bit further here. We're gonna make each one four sentences, read them together, and just basically decide which one sounds better. Make the email four sentences. Come over to Claude. While this generates, I wanna point out as well that to get access to their API, I guess probably, I could probably leave a link in the description. I'm only just typing Anthropic API. At the time of me getting access, there was a wait list. I'm not sure if that still exists. What I do know is that to get access to Claude 3 Opus, in the context of software development or API endpoints, it actually is more expensive than ChatGPT4 in the same context. So keep that in mind if you want to develop software and supposedly get access to a higher level model than GPT4, it will be a little bit more expensive. Let's go ahead and read this email. I regret to inform you that due to illness, I am unable to work on Friday and have consulted a healthcare professional who advised rest. I've arranged for a colleague's name 
to cover any urgent task and will monitor my email for any critical issues. I apologize for the inconvenience and aim to return Monday. Thank you for understanding. Sounds like a chat GPT response. I'm ready to inform you that I'm feeling unwell and will not be able to come into the office on Friday, April 12th, 2024. I've been experiencing. Oh, wow. That actually got the date. I've been experiencing severe flu-like symptoms since last night. I apologize for any inconvenience this may cause, and I will ensure any injured tasks are communicated to the relevant team members. I expect to return to the office on Monday, April 15th, 2024. That's better. That is a better response. It is specific on the dates. It's also very like, like this one's no dates. Uh, it's more general. This one does feel a little bit more specific and actually answers pre relevant questions in the context of like not being able to make the office. All right, Claude, not bad. Let's try another use case here. Make me a social media schedule for my dog company. Yes, it's back. Chewy Bones. Make me a social media schedule for the month of May for my company, Chewy Bones. You come up with everything relevant I will need. Input, output, input, output. Okay, ChatGPT is not too bad here. We got weekly themes, daily schedule. And here is Claude's content, content themes, posting frequency, content calendar. Ooh. Okay. Both are not bad, but yeah, no, I'm leaning towards Claude on this as well. It seems like Claude is like, this is very general. So I think the, the name of the game or the theme of this video is that in a specific context of inquiring for prompts, it seems like Claude understands it more and gives you like more of the information that you would actually care about. So like week one, May one to seven, I would actually care about that if I was making a social media schedule compared to this, which is like week one product highlights. And it's like a pseudo schedule that could possibly work. And then just like gives you random days that are relevant. But I asked for a social media schedule. What is a social media schedule? That's week one, week two, week three, week four, with the dates identified and some relevant hashtags. So it seems like there'll be a couple more videos on this topic. Let's keep comparing Cloud3, Opus, and ChatGPT. Make sure to subscribe as we'll be going over which one is better on your use case. As with any of these AI models, and specifically if you watch that very beginning video I referenced, it really just depends on what you care about and what you're trying to achieve. Person A, and person B are going to have way different reasons why they would use a model like this. Me personally, I use these models for the context of software development. So when choosing my model, I typically like to choose the one that performs best in that realm. So keep that in mind. I'll see you in the next video. This playlist right here goes everything we need to know about Anthropic. Got a couple videos in there. That's a random video. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.